Welcome to Bad Gear, the show about the world's most hated audio tools. The zero years were a tough time for synth aficionados. After the Groovebox revolution of the late 90s and the introduction of the MS-2000 for ants, real innovation was rare. Almost everybody was indulging in the possibilities of the DAW and it took a few years until people started to realize that something was missing. Today we are going to talk about the Teenage Engineering OP1 and it was one of the first instruments to set a counterpoint to the choice paralysis and much criticized lack of immediacy that often comes with an in-the-box workflow. This 2011 synthesizer, sampler, 4-track recorder slash looper, FX unit, radio and milestone of Scandinavian design not only was the main protagonist of a worldwide EDM hit video instead of Pharrell Williams, it also made its way into the collection of the San Francisco Museum of modern art and I am starting to feel a little uncomfortable now. At the first, second and third glance the OP1 is ticking more boxes than even the absolute pros are ready to use. I can't say that I've ever used Sketch to be honest. The aluminum version of a Casio BL1 with a display that is occupied by pointlessly humongous tape reels most of the time, satisfyingly clacky yet non-velocity sensitive buttons and you can lego five the endless rotary encoders, which is fine I guess. Mini jack midi ports totally suck and Teenage Engineering solved the problem by including no midi ports at all. The unit does support USB midi though. Plenty of synthesizer engines with FX, specialized in sampling, 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 FM, and PD, physical modeling of strings, 8-bit synthesis, and various conventional and not so conventional takes on creating tones from scratch. Eight different patches can be put on speed dial and played with the onboard keyboard, USB or one of the internal sequences. There are two dedicated engines for drum sounds. A sample based one which lets you play single hits out of an audio file of up to 12 seconds. Great for chopping up material you either recorded from the built-in microphone or radio, vinyl or maybe even YouTube. I have yet to fully understand the drum synth. The OP1 is not multi-timbral, so the only way to build arrangements is by recording performances to the four tracks of virtual tape one by one. While some of the simulated behavior of analog tape is much appreciated, Teenage Engineering included a few quirks I could totally do without, like a tape length limit of six minutes and a tedious erase process. Finished songs can be mastered to an album and USB backups include the individual tape tracks of your project. The whole very speed section is well thought out. And the limitations breed creativity workflow is certainly welcomed by many OP1 users. A real undo functionality or maybe even virtual tracks would have made my life a lot easier though. Once you have committed your sounds to tape, there is no way to quantize them. But don't worry, there is no way to quantize them before either. However, the machine comes with a bunch of creative sequencing tools. An arpeggiator, SH-101 style sequencing on steroids, a classic pattern editor, a sequencer Isaac Newton would have been proud of, I'm positive the guys over at TE had heard of commodity fetishism before and I found Finger to be the most useful one. These sequences don't lock onto tape transport, but there are a few tricks to make them play in time. 
The lift drop functionality is more powerful than you might expect. I'm not sure if the over-the-top design of the FX section makes it easier to use, but there is reverb, delay, 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 delay filters, delay, weird sound delay, destruction delay, devices, and the car. <laughs> the toys are as worthy as the LFO section shines with almost modular level versatility. What else? Ah yeah, mixer, master EQ and FX, helpful features for live performances, a master bus compression saturation thingy, a meter battery status indicator, a Walker grade internal speaker. There were noise issues and stuck notes when used with a computer. You will need to use the shift button a lot. I didn't know I needed a G-force accelerometer and I'm sure you will let me know in the comments if I forgot to mention your favorite feature. OP1s were already pricey when they were introduced, the instrument was temporarily discontinued in 2018, prices on the used market soared like crazy and now it's available again and slightly more expensive than a compact field mixer. The Teenage Engineering OP1 seems like a collection of loosely connected yet great sounding tools trapped inside something you would expect to find in the IKEA's kits section. Is it an international treasure? You have already heard the OP-1 in today's intro tune. That thing can sound surprisingly nasty. Let's start this out with a little jam from the I have no idea what I'm doing phase. Seasoned OP1 users will know that I barely scratched the surface, but it took me a while to figure out how to sync sequences and get some dynamics into the drums. The lack of physical MIDI limits the instrument's use in doorless setups, but it can provide a clock signal using one of the master channels. Time to hook it up to a pocket operator. is a little too boxy for my taste, I really like the raw sounds, especially the string synth. However, I had a hard time getting used to the workflow many people find so refreshing. I wanna know if I can do better with the OP1 hooked up to the DAW in this motivational gym playlist progressive house EDM big room nightmare. Verdict. The Teenage Engineering OP-1 is practically immune to criticism. Whatever design omissions or technical shortcomings it might have, they can be wiped away with the limitations are OP-1's biggest feature mantra. And there is some truth to it. The OP-1 has a very characteristic modern sound and lets you approach electronic music from a different angle. However, regardless of the machine's daring concept, finesse and bold aesthetics, I didn't enjoy using it at all. Sure, I would need a longer period of time to fully appreciate the workflow, but the additional layers of abstraction, the loose interaction between its parts and the very limited connectivity made me wish for a more streamlined concept like an Electron, an old Electribe or maybe even a DAW. I refuse to deliver a verdict on the OP-1. 
There are many people who use it to great effect, but it is the exact opposite of what I personally want in a musical instrument. It seems like being the host of a show called Bad Gear finally takes its toll. Thanks for watching and see you next time! Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Feel free to like, subscribe, become a patron and leave a comment what other kind of gear you would like to see and hear on the show. 